Looks like Bruh Fox and Bruh Bear are causing some kind of commotion downstream. Please stay in your boats while we take care of things. Your visit to Splash Mountain will continue in just a bit. Now we are back in Disney World, and to prove it, here's the Mickey Mouse Review. W. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the WDW Radio Show, your Walt Disney World information station. I am your host, Lou Mangiello, and this is show number 257 for the week of January 15th, 2012. We'll take a look back at this past weekend's Walt Disney World Marathon series of events with a roundtable of participants from every level, from first-timers to seasoned veterans as well as those who were there to help cheer the runners along. We'll look not only at the races themselves, but what the weekend has become for Disney fans from around the world. From the social to the charitable, we'll discuss the difference that this weekend has made in the lives of the runners and those who they ran for. We'll also talk about future events, including an announcement about how and why you can participate in the excitement of Marathon Weekend going forward. I'll also have another announcement about an upcoming WDW Radio special event and how you can be a part of it no matter where you are. Stay tuned for some additional announcements before I play more of your voicemails at the end of the show. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's episode of the WDW Radio Show. Each year, millions of visitors from around the world come to Walt Disney World. Some for vacation, honeymoons, spring breaks, family reunions, business conferences, or just to get away. And every January, tens of thousands more come to participate in an event that's grown beyond the confines of its name to be something truly special, as the Walt Disney World Marathon Weekend has become for many a journey, a destination, a challenge, and an adventure. And so this week, I want to take a look at these events, plural, not just from a running perspective, but how it's become so much more and why it should become something you consider in the future. And so I want to welcome back to the roundtable some friends who have been part of this event and the planning and the coaching, the running and the cheering. And of course, as always, ladies first, and sitting here with me in studio I'm thrilled to welcome back the lovely, the talented, the woman behind the man, Deanna Mangello. Hi, everybody. And also, again, continuing with ladies first, I'll introduce them as the pair. They are Valerie Drew, who is the head of the WDW Radio Running Team, and her husband, Steve Drew. Guys, welcome back. Thank you. Hello. Hi, everyone. Also back to the show is Joe Kalinsky. He was actually on a couple of months ago for our marathon prep show. Joe, welcome back. Hey, Lou. And joining me in studio after his first marathon event is Mike Beckerman. What's up, everyone? All right, guys, welcome back. I appreciate it. Everybody sounds good after uh, their running and cheering and getting up at 2 a.m. weekend. But I want to quickly, before we talk about uh, our experiences and the weekend in general, I want to talk about the event because I keep on saying that it gets bigger and better than ever. And we can discuss uh, along today's path the better aspect. 
But the bigger part is really without question because this year, 56,000 people registered for the Walt Disney World Marathon, making it one of the most popular destination races in the entire country. Now to put it all in perspective, since 1994, this weekend has grown from about 5,500 runners to more than 112 athletes and spectators who come into Walt Disney World to participate in the marathon weekend. And I think this really kind of reflects this growing trend in sort of a, a new term called sports tourism, where the events are not just about running. And I think this is certainly no exception. I think probably even and more than ever, uh, very much not the case. And we'll talk about that as we go on. But runners come from more than 60 countries, all 50 states, making the event possibly the largest sporting event in Central Florida and really on par with some of the largest conventions that come in here as well. And I think part of the reason why it's gotten bigger is because we've talked about this in the past. I think that the athletes combine the event with a vacation and the sort of the, the challenges of an endurance sport. But I think, too, people who are guests, who are, are vacationers, are now coming down and participating in a weekend that affords everybody from kids races to a full marathon. There's something here for everybody. And a lot of people like myself who are admittedly not athletes, we're not runners, see that there are such unique Disney elements such as running through the Disney parks and the characters and the entertainment and the way the event is run. Obviously, the, the medals are a big draw as well, too. And another big aspect uh, on a more global scale is the good that is done, is the charitable aspect to it. Because in 2011, Disney collected more than 25,000 pieces of clothing, including the hats and jackets and sweaters and shirts and gloves that marathon runners wear as the race begins and then throw off along the course. Those are donated to local charities, uh, Disney Textile Services. They launder it. They give it to things like Harvest Time International, the Salvation Army, and the Coalition for the Homeless. And they also raise collectively about $10 million per year, about $61 million in total uh, in 13 years for a number of charities such as Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Again, we'll talk about what we do sort of collectively as WDW Radio uh, to do our part for that as well too. But let's talk about you guys and what you drew you to the events in the first place. And Steve, you know, you are now sort of you are the sort of the machine because whether it's eating or running, you just you're like the energizer bunny. You just keep going. But the Disney Marathon was your first race back in 2008. What was it that drew you here, other than the fact that your wife was coming down to cheer on? Well, other than the fact that I got uh, tricked into going, uh, <laughs> our, our family always enjoyed going to Disney World together, and just the thought of going in January sounded great. And uh, after that first year, it's become a traditional vacation for us that we look forward to. Uh, you don't get that blues after the New Year's. You look forward to the following week to go to Marathon Weekend. And so you are one of those people that combines the vacation and time with your family and time with your friends into the event. Now, Joe, you've been running for a number of years. Tell us about your first Disney Marathon experience. And what was it that, that drew you here? Was it the race itself or you being a Disney fan? Well, I was, I guess, an evolving Disney fan at the time. My daughter was really young and I had just finished running my first marathon the prior November. Um, in, in 05, I ran New York City, which was my, my first real race that I've ever run. And uh, from there, you know, my daughter and I thought that it would be great to, to go down to Disney World and try another one. And we did, and, and she absolutely loved it. So I did uh, the first uh, Walt Disney World uh, marathon the following January in 06. And quite honestly, I really – I hate missing marathons in Walt Disney World ever since because it's just a spectacular event. And it's something that I sort of – just what Steve says is it gets you right out of the holiday blues right after the new year. You have something else to focus on on your calendar. And it's just a wonderful experience. And you guys both made a good point about doing stuff together. You know, Steve, you went with your wife who was there cheering with us. 
and Joe, you went with your daughter. You know, my first experience was with my wife. Again, going back to uh, talking about it on the show in 2007, challenging myself to see if I could do a half marathon. And my wife and I ran together. She was an athlete. She was a, you know, she ran uh, track back in high school. But this was our first event together. And I talked about from that year forward about how it was and still remains one of my very best Disney overall Disney experiences ever and Deanna you know too the we had just such a good time it wasn't about the race for us but what it was having been here hundreds of times as Disney enthusiasts and Disney fans coming to do an event that was never on our radar beforehand never that was actually uh, the first long distance race that I ever did I was a sprinter and I did miles here and there to keep myself conditioned to be a sprinter. So it has always been a a long time goal for me to do half. And I completed my first full marathon in January of 2011. Thank God for Steve Drew. I'll just tell you that. (laughs) And it just, it's an amazing experience. But on the other point too, Lou, it's also a huge social thing. We get together and we have our running team, but just to have all of our friends and lots of family there, it is becomes a huge social weekend for all of us. Yeah, and as the Disney event has evolved and grown, so has what we've been doing. You know, we were talking offline about how that first year in 2008, you and I were running together and it was there that Valerie was on the sidelines cheering us on. And since that time, it's grown to... As the WDW Radio family has grown to the uh, growth of the WDW Radio running team, where we now raise money for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. We have more than 100 people who take part as athletes as in the events, whether it's the 5K, the half, the full, the goofy, the dopey. Uh, Joe, you and Happy Keller and others you know, are helping to coach people virtually on the blog, on our Facebook page, in individual emails. Happy's been answering emails. You guys came on the show a couple of months ago and really helped people get ready for this event. A number of people who had heard about it maybe on the show or had been thinking about it for years and finally made what I think is the toughest part of the the marathon itself is the decision to run. Uh, But you helped them through the blog posts and through the Facebook and the encouragement. You helped them get ready, not just sort of physically in training, but you helped them get ready mentally and let me sort of ask that first question to you is how important do you think it was as we sort of think about the pre-race kind of stuff is it is the mental part i think a lot of people were worried that they didn't train enough but i think the mental aspect is a huge factor in that joe what's your opinion about sort of the the mental prep uh the mental prep well first thing is like do as i say not as i do Mm -hmm. i hate to say that uh because i made every single mistake you could possibly make uh, last weekend, it was it was rough. It really was, and I made some bad decisions. Um, but I'm glad I didn't uh, share that my what I was going to do. Uh, I actually share what you were supposed to do while preparing for a marathon. And preparation uh, mentally is is really really important. You really should take a look at the map of the race that you're going to run. Whether it's you know Disneyland running the half later later this year in September or running the Walt Disney World Marathon maybe next year or 5K whatever you're running, you really should look at the map and and try to picture yourself doing it because the mental aspect of of getting through the miles, especially if you're running the marathon past mile 20, that is so key. It, it's extremely difficult. You have to believe in yourself that you can do it and erase all the questions in your mind. And that's not an easy thing to do, and it takes a lot of preparation. I think most of the preparation is definitely a mind game. This year, I was not ready to run a full marathon because mentally I was not prepared. Physically, too, but I definitely feel that it's a mental mind game. And, Steve, you can back me up on this. When Steve and I start a race, he breaks down the whole race for me. 
he says to me, okay, remember the first three miles, that's our breaking mile. And Steve does his little coughing thing. I do a little breathing <laughs> thing. And <laughs> we don't even count those first three. <laughs> so they're a wash for us. And then we start, you know, talking and laughing. We tell jokes. We sing. We look at, you know, the, the, the trick that Steve always tells me is don't look down. I think as a runner, once you start looking down, it just becomes longer and you really start thinking about how many more miles you really have to go. That's true, and uh, also uh, it helps with your breathing. If you don't keep your head tucked down. But uh, for the marathon, I always count it as 23 miles. I know if I make it to the studios, I'm home free at that point. So right off the bat, I kind of scratch off the last three, though, and that's a... Uh, you always I'm, scratch off the last three for our half, too, though. You scratch off the first three for our half, and we scratch off the last three for our half. Yeah, it's those other ones. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know how you do that, Steve. You're an anomaly, because I will tell you that when I ran my first half, that last 0.2 miles or 0.1 mile was the longest 0.1 in my existence. But the reason why I want to talk about the, the pre-race kind of stuff is that, like planning a, a Disney trip... It's part of the process. It's also part of the fun, too. And, and I think Disney has done a really good job of helping with, and Val, we've seen this, too, over the years, of sort of helping keep, get people prepared. The Run Disney website has a lot more information on it now. They now have uh, apps and texting where you can track your runner. So if you're there sort of cheering people on, it very much helps you prepare. Obviously now too, they have um, uh, tools and videos and they've got the online training. They've brought in Jeff Galloway, who is uh, a very well-known marathon runner and his trip tricks and techniques, things like that have really gone a long way in helping people to prepare. So I think that has been a really important part that they've addressed is the pre-race kind of stuff, th things you need to think about and do and the mental aspects of it even before you walk out of the house on, on marathon day. Oh yeah, they really have. Um, I know that they send out regular emails that give you training tips and, and places to go and information. And also not just for the runner, but also for those planning, because when you mentioned the planning part, um, not only am I planning for the team, but when I look at my weekend, I look at when I can get my runners fed and into bed so that they are rested and ready for their races, uh, which makes it difficult. One night we had dinner at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> Best night of sleep we had all weekend, though. <laughs> so, you know, there's a little bit of different kind of planning going on. Believe it or not, Val, most of the people in South Florida are probably planning to have dinner at 3 o'clock anyway, so you fit right in. <laughs> <laughs> now, what are you trying to say to me? <laughs> Did you get any early bird specials? <laughs> no, we did not. <laughs> but, you know, we talk about the weekend in terms of using the nomenclature of, of marathon weekend. And normally, especially in the past, as we've talked about it, we talk about the full marathon on Sunday. The half marathon is usually an entry point for a lot of people on Saturday. And I want to this year address and talk a little bit about the 5K event, which takes place on Friday, because it is an important part of marathon weekend. And for a lot of people... It's how they start sort of getting introduced to the marathon experience. And part of the reason why I wanted to have Mike Beckerman here is because he took part in his first 5K this past weekend. Congratulations on finishing. But my, my question to you, Mike, was what was it? Why did you want to be a part of Marathon Weekend? What made you sign up? other than probably a girl. What made you sign up for Marathon Week? And the girl that I'm pointing, is not necessarily my wife. I thought it was a different girl. But why did you want to be part of the Marathon Weekend? Well, funny story is originally I had zero plans of running in Marathon Weekend at all. I actually had intended to start with my first 5K being the Princess 5K coming up uh, next month. But uh, right before it hit capacity, Deanna Mangello calls me up and says, hey, we're going to do the 5K, and I'm like, uh, I'm not going to be ready for it. She goes, yeah, you will. So I sign up for it, and uh, maybe it was three weeks before the race, and I start running three miles every two days, uh, and then comes the 5K. So so as far as this event's concerned, you were goaded into it, but you had plans to run in the Princess next month. 
was it the social aspect? Was it the metal? Like, what was that thing that made you say, again, it probably was another woman that convinced you to run, but what was it that you thought was going to be, was it that you heard about what a great time people had in the past? Yeah, definitely for me, it was um, the social aspect of it and, um, you know, maybe the metal to it. It was a very nice looking metal this year. But definitely the social aspect of it. Uh, joining the running team actually got me motivated to run. Um, also, I'm looking to lose a little bit of weight. So all these things got me motivated to run. So I ran this year's 5K. Awesome. And now, Steve and Deanna, you guys were there for the event for the 5K. And I think to a certain degree, too, was not only for the event for yourself, but to help some of those other people as well. Deanna, again, you sort of brought Mike into the 5K, and there were a lot of people that we saw this year that that was first their first event. Um, tell me first in, in your mind, how does this event differ from something like the half or the full? It's definitely an event that the family can get involved in. Um, my kids are both looking forward to possibly running either the princess or in January for the family run. And it's it, it becomes an event where everyone can share in the experience. Uh, a lot of women took their children in strollers and they did the 5K in strollers, whereas we had a lot of new runners this year. And we felt it was extremely important for us to support them. A lot of them said that they couldn't run and they were running 18-minute miles, where when we ran as a group, that wasn't the case at all. They were running 12-minute, 13-minute miles, where we were willing to walk, we were willing to run. Whatever we needed to do to get the group going and that we could finish together, it worked. So, And it was a great experience. This was my first 5K at Disney. Um, Steve, I know you ran a couple without me because I know there was a couple people that you had run with but it was a great experience the run in the morning through Epcot and you know just to go through all the countries that early in the morning it was a beautiful morning and it was a great experience and that's the thing I think about the 5k is it's very much about having fun yeah. nobody is trying to win the 5k you know, yeah. nobody's trying to to be Bostos and and win the 5k so so Mike what was it like for you as a, a, a first timer doing this, um, I mean, as a first timer, obviously you have your concerns going into it. Um, previously, as I said, my longest distance run to this point was only three miles. Now, granted, a five k is three point one miles, so I thought I was going to do okay. And um, you know, you get your nervous like the day before, but as you do it, it's a it's a ton of fun. Running with friends is highly recommended. It gets you through. And the experience itself is like unlike any other. And I always said when I thought about doing the half marathon, look, Joe, like you, do as I say, not as I do as far as training is concerned. I never really ran more than about six miles, and that was on a treadmill. So I was very nervous about being swept. I said that if I was, I would never podcast again due to the humiliation I had suffered. But I knew or I believed uh, that it was going to be the adrenaline the environment, the experience, the people who were there, the people who were cheering, the characters that carried me through. And I think that's very much the case, especially with that 5K. You don't need to train for it because that adrenaline, that emotion, that experience is going to carry you through. Now, you also did something that uh, I wouldn't normally recommend. It probably isn't normally available, but I have to assume that you enjoyed the experience. You enjoyed that feeling of getting that medal and wearing it around the parks all day, as you should have. You did something really stupid because you said we knew of a mutual friend that had um, a, a bib that she was unable to use due to injury. And you were so jazzed up about the experience that you decide about three o'clock that afternoon. Well, hey, I got nothing going on tomorrow. Instead of cheering, I'm going to run the half marathon. What were you thinking, man? <sighs> <laughs> so many things were going through my head at the time. Um, that morning when we had finished the 5K, I said, you know what? By mile two, I was so upset that we were about to finish in another mile. So I said to myself, how bad could the half marathon be? <laughs> <laughs> you can tell you're 22. <laughs> yes, I am 22. I have that going for me. But as I said before, longest run ever, three miles. Never done anything like the half marathon before. Like the 40-hour show, 
it probably sounded good in your mind, and then as you finally committed to it, you're like, "What was I? Why? Why am I doing this again? What? How am I going to get through twenty? You know, thirteen point one miles?" Exactly. Um, actually, the nice thing was that morning we had met up with all of our uh, running team members, and I had found someone who had a very similar experience as me. It was their first half marathon. Their only goal is to finish, which was my goal at the time. And so uh, Nathan, who I had joined up with at the time, we were in the same corral. He and I ran the half marathon together. And, uh, you know, we kept at each other's pace. We, what we would do is we would run a mile and then walk a minute. And that seemed to work out perfectly. And um, come, uh, is that the Jeff Galloway method? Is that sort of the, the Jeff Galloway coaching method? It's one of his methods. It's one not totally his method, but it, it seemed to work because I ended up doing um, a, the princess the year before last. And I did it with um, another runner also. And we did run a mile, walk a minute. Okay. Right. It, it's very similar to the Galloway method, although the Galloway method you run um, not for as long and you probably walk for longer. But... Run a mile, walk a minute worked out perfectly for me. And, and that's what happens. Everybody sort of finds their groove. Deanna likes to run at a specific pace. I like to... I, my th- I, my joke was I would run when it was on stage and I'd walk backstage. <laughs> so yeah, if that, anybody that, took a picture, I would look like I was running as, as opposed to panning. But you find what works well for you. And look, there is no right method. And it you know for people who have been concerned, like, oh, I could never do a half marathon, you can walk a fast pace. You can <laughs> run a little bit, walk a little bit. And you'll still finish in fine time without getting swept. Yeah, believe it or not, um, I did not think at all that I would finish the marathon in under three hours. Come to find out when we crossed the finish line, I did it in two hours and 55 minutes, which for my first half marathon, I would say is pretty respectable. And considering your training consisted of, gee, I think I'll do the marathon tomorrow. So (laughs) that's not bad. (laughs) No, not bad at all. But, But Val... For us, again, I, I did my half marathon. It was a one and done. I, I say half jokingly that um, I, I do more good on this side of the ropes than I do on the other side. So cheering has become a, a very big part of the experience, not just for us, but for other people. And I think there's uh, sort of a, a couple of reasons why that's the case. I think it's important to be there as an active participant and see family and friends look when you're on that course and I know from experience when you see a friendly face where somebody calls out your name it's very very helpful and to that end we're there not only to cheer on our friends our family our WDW radio family of runners but the other people on the course and you know from look Val we were out there with the runners at three o'clock in the morning in Epcot uh, at the corral sort of helping getting them pumped up and we were in the Magic Kingdom on Main Street uh, uh, for the half marathon. Uh, we were also at Epcot. We have other people stationed around the course. You know, and you can see, and we've heard feedback from people, how valuable they find that hearing somebody call their name or a familiar blue shirt, or even if you read the name on a bib of a running passing by, that helps get them going very, very much. Oh, yeah. Um, there's a specific post from one of our runners who said, that she couldn't do it without us. That that to there's nothing like running into Epcot in the UK and having 15 people there yelling your name and telling you you can get to the end. And you know that makes it all worthwhile. And um, I have to admit, we stayed in the Magic Kingdom until we knew Beckerman was alive. On <laughs> it was but, a, okay, we can go to Epcot now. I I thank you guys for that. Um, it actually it helped me get through that area of the magic kingdom because at that point my legs were starting to hurt a lot and just seeing you guys cheering me on got me right through it yeah that where we were we we normally it's been our tradition val uh that we stand on main street usa when those runners come into main street we moved a little closer for the full uh towards where they come in yeah but, you know stuff. yeah when that when that's hitting mile 10 on the full marathon you know we know how important that is and even for the half marathon that, that's a big milestone when they're getting there. So getting that little burst of energy by seeing a friendly face or a sign or just somebody sticking their hand out to, to tell you, good job, Deanna's nodding there in agreement. Uh, it does help get you going. But uh, to that point, uh, Steve and Deanna, who have run multiple halves in the past, tell me, if any way, how was this year 
different? Um, was the course any different? Was it a better event? Was there anything that you sort of noted uh, that was changed this year uh, about the experience, whether it was a personal way or sort of a, a generic, just course wide way? Um, Deanna and then Steve. I definitely feel that the race has grown so much that there was so many people and to get to your corral and usually we're in our corral during the anthem and there there were still tons and tons of people still walking to corrals before we even got there. We actually ran to our corral and then we started running and that was the first time like Steve has our regiment that we're there and we go when, you know, the fireworks go off. We weren't even in our corral when the fireworks went off for the first wheelchairs. Yeah. And you guys left because we met up in Epcot at the tents sort of with the team ahead of time. We like sort of sort of getting everybody together and, and, you know, jazzed up, getting ready to go. And you guys left early to make sure you got there on time. And you saw that sort of wave of people going in. And everybody seemed to say that. Again, this is not only a very well-organized event, probably the most well-organized of any of their endurance events, but this year we all noticed that the, there were long lines, not only to get to the corrals, there were long lines, people said, for, for to get to Epcot, although they had a lot of buses continuing to flow through. So it shows you how this event really has grown, especially on the half. I think the half, definitely. Um, there are so many more runners than the full I mean, there's a ton of runners for both days, but it just seemed that this year we just were crammed in. Like, you know that like the first two miles, you're kind of going to be doing like a quick walk, kind of slow jog. We didn't break out until mile three or four because it was that packed. Steve, was there anything different for you about this year's half marathon? Yeah, I agree with what Deanna said. That was the the biggest thing I noticed that when you move from uh the reunion area to the corrals, it didn't move at all. You just inched your way to the corrals and uh, the corral A left and there was still thousands of people making their way to their corrals. Uh, it just, and I know the buses were cramped and were running late. Some people had to wait for four buses from the resort to get to the race. So a lot of people were running right to the corrals and running right into the race. Yeah. So it just seemed, uh, extra crowded this year at the beginning. But after that, you know, after you got a couple miles in, you know, it all went pretty well. Yeah, and even we who were on the other side of the ropes tried to address that as well because we knew there were so many more runners. We wanted to make sure that we... It's Look, it's easier for people who are running to find sometimes their families than vice versa because this sea of humanity funnels onto Main Street. So we made sure we were all there in our blue shirts and we had signs and we were tracking runners. And we all, we too, Val, did a couple of things that were different this year. Obviously, uh, come uh, full marathon day, we moved our location more towards the hub of Town Square. That's going to be our permanent spot. Yeah. So it's easy for the runners to find us. Um, but I also, I had an idea that morning because for us, Val, who get, look, it's, it's, insane to set your clock for a two o'clock wake up when you're not going to be getting a medal at the end of the day but we have such a good time getting together and it was you and I and, and Val and, and Susan Brinkerhoff whose husband and son were running and a lot of us sort of got together we were out there we made our way over to the Magic Kingdom that was part of the experience for us and I thought that morning that a lot of people don't get to experience it from that end and as the race started going on I had this idea that says you know I've got my iPhone in my pocket I'm going to broadcast. I'm going to broadcast the marathon. I want people to see and try and feel the energy that was going on there. I want them to have that experience with us and almost be able to cheer on virtually. And again, I sort of didn't think about it till that morning. I tweeted it out and it was great because so many people came into the mini box, as it were, and they said it was the first time, obviously the only time they were ever able to experience it that way. And now it's prompted them to come down to either cheer or to maybe even race because they saw how fun that is. And my plan going forward is to do that in the future, is to start broadcasting, you know, so you could sort of join us on the cheering side and you'll be able to watch, you'll be able to chat and see these runners coming in to the Magic Kingdom and to Epcot and get a sense of what that's like. Because a lot of people said it was really nice to see, you know, that they were... Uh, inspired by that and, and and Val you know too 
while we're standing there, it's very re- rewarding for us, for people to come and stop and they want a picture or they say, hey, you know, you guys inspired me and I'm, and I'm part of the running team and I'm making a difference. And, and so it's very rewarding on both ends and to be able to sort of help connect people to the experience virtually if they can't get down there. You know, we had people in the UK and Germany and Japan watching. So it was a lot of fun being able to bring oh. the experience to them that way. And a shout out to the box people, because within 10 minutes of you starting your streaming, we had 57 people. <laughs> and and I mind you, that's 530 in the, that's five o'clock in the morning, too. We're not talking in the middle of the afternoon. <laughs> it was early. And yeah, it was wonderful. It was it was great to see them. And, and and, you know, it was great for the runners to see that we were streaming them. Yeah. I mean, uh, we had people who found out that their runners were on the course and that we were streaming. And so they were watching us to try to see their runners. Yeah, it was really, uh, it was a lot of fun uh, again for us too. Uh, it was a great time, a really great time. I, I want to move over to um, to the full marathon if I can. Uh, and Joe, I want to start off with you because again, as somebody who's been running in the New York marathon, speaking of crazy ideas, Mike Beckerman, this is, uh, and you talked about this a little bit um, when we were doing our, our prep show, I want to take a, a quick aside because for you, you know, we, we've been talking about the charitable aspect of what we're doing and making a difference personally and for other people. This is of the first of your 12 in 12. Explain briefly what that is and what you're doing for yourself. Well, uh, what I figured I'd do was uh, try to put a bunch of things that I really enjoy together, right, For to really help a good cause. So, what I figured was I'd, I'd try to run a marathon a month, starting with the Walt Disney World Marathon in January. And um, what I'd do is I'd run it for the Dream Team, uh, one a month so that I can sort of generate hopefully some some charity and, and some some interest uh, in joining the running team. And I figured doing, doing that in different locations throughout the year would sort of, again, aside from the financial aspect of it, sort of motivate some people to maybe give a 5K a chance, uh, try a mile, try a half marathon, try a 10K, whatever's out there. You can do it because let's face it, if you see me, I've told you this before, Lou, I'm built for comfort, not speed. Who the heck am I kidding, <laughs> right? No, I'm, and, and, I'm, and I'm perfectly fine with that, you know? My only goal is to finish. I am not, you know, there is no inner Kenyan for me to release during a marathon. <laughs> you know, there isn't. So for me, it, it, the goal is just to finish. So if I start some Thing I want to finish it, and this is going to be a challenge for me because I've only run, let, let's just say I've run less than 15 marathons in my life, and I'm going to run 12 this year. So it, it's, Wait, you, it's say, pretty you say I've run less than 15 marathons as like you're ashamed of that. <laughs> like I've well, only no, run no, less than. <laughs> I'm just trying to put that in, I'm just trying to put it in perspective, saying that you know I've, I've only I've done less than 15 in my life, and I'm going to do 12 in a year. So for me, that that's a very big challenge, you know, and. Uh, I think I can handle it, but I, I the the thing that motivates me obviously it's it's bringing together a lot of different things. It's my love of running, uh, my love of all things Disney, uh, the fact that I was a Maker Wish uh, a Wish grantor for the Maker Wish Foundation in New York City, and I got to see where the money goes that the Dream Team generates, right. and it's just phenomenal. Right. So with all of that, if I had a chance, to, and I have a chance now to do something kind of nice uh, to, to help out a really great cause and at the same time enjoy a bunch of things and put a bunch of things together that, that I like, then, you know, I'm all the better for it. So that's, that's my 12 and 12 for this year. And it's, I'm, I'm looking forward to it and it's going to be a challenge, but it's worth it. Well, you should be very proud of that. And, uh, you know, it's great to see that you are making a difference not only in your own life, but in the lives of others. Uh, I, too, am a bit ashamed. It's already the middle of January. I've only eaten 15 bags of Funyuns this month, and I really need to get going uh, if I plan to reach my goal. <laughs> uh, but, Steve, you are you're, you're a little bit goofy, man, and I mean that in the best possible sense in that you are one of the many people that participates in what Disney terms the Goofy Marathon, which is you kind of use the half marathon as sort of your warm-up, your primer. Well, actually, you're a little dopey, right? Because you did the 5K, you did the half on Saturday, and then on Sunday, you do the full marathon. Um, I don't know if Beckerman's decision to do it the day before is crazier or your decision to do the the, um, 
the the dopey and the goofy like that is is really a little bit more insane. But that's something you've been doing for a couple of years. And a lot of people say, well, how could you possibly do a half on Saturday and be ready to run a full marathon on Sunday? What's what's that like going from the half to the full? Well, the the key is to train for it, and uh, so you when you wake up on Sunday morning after the half marathon that you you're not sore to start off with, and then uh, then it's just fun. I think uh, this is the fourth year I've done it, and it's you know it's a lot of fun. So I don't you know I I don't want to miss out on it. And this year, doing the five k on Friday, really I had a great time with that. I, I keep doing that that was one of the most fun i've had running since i started uh just the group we were with and it's just a great way for people to get started running uh we were with some people that they probably thought that was going to be tough for them and uh it was just a great time so just from all all three races it's just enjoyable so I'll, i'm going to do it again next year you know as you're describing this as fun the three of us who are here in studio are shaking our heads like fun what's wrong with you're an anomaly man you shouldn't <laughs> and i'm sure it is I'm, look and the important thing is that you do need to really train you know the 5k you could do tomorrow and the half marathon yeah you can do with a little bit of training but you really need to prepare for this and it and look i, I wish that my legs weren't so short and stubby because it would probably be awesome to run through all four theme parks to be able to really go through all of the theme park areas of Walt Disney World property. And Val, we even saw too, as we were cheering, again, our location for when we cheer is again, Main Street in the morning. We have a number, a couple of people sometimes in places like Animal Kingdom or the studios, but our other big location is uh, in Epcot by the United Kingdom Pavilion, which is getting close to the finish line. And I love being there because again, it's where they enter the park again, coming from backstage and so many people said that's where they needed that extra push you know as there's a mile and a half or whatever it was left to go and and joe i saw you come in and we saw steve come through and a lot of people felt that way that it's it's really great to see the the shirts and the signs and the people cheering look we we cheered with everybody whether they were with our team another the team in training just people we saw who needed maybe a little bit of an extra push to get through it and it, it was great to see their reaction it was really great for us too uh to sort of help give them that extra little push the inspirations that you see the people that you see um above and beyond our own team there was a woman who was coming in and she had on one of those um velcro on casts on the bottom of her leg i would have to guess that, she, that something happened during the race and there she was hobbling into epcot and it was, I told her she was just amazing. I said, you totally rock. I can't believe that you're finishing this with that thing on your leg. There was and a she father. Was so thrilled. There was a father that actually had his daughter on his Here. back yeah. yep. at mile 25. And that that is where it, you, it's just killer right there. You just are really it's, pushing through and you have to dig deep to get through that last mile and a half because <laughs> you're just dead. Yeah. And we do all that we can to try and help them along. We're out there, we're giving high fives. I, I was trying to run with people as, as far as I could, which was like 25 feet. But I was trying to run with them to help them give them a little bit of push. Again, we were broadcasting it during that time, too. It was great for them, for people to watch and see as people were uh, coming close to the finish line. And, Joe, I, I'm sure you can attest to this. This is where I, get, I have to assume that the mental really overtake. It really is mind over matter at this point. Yeah, I mean, not to get technical or anything, Lou. I don't want to bore anybody to death with the physics of it all. But after mile twenty, is when you hit the wall. Oh, so totally. by by mile twenty five, when you're in, when you're entering Epcot, where where you where the team was uh, near the UK, I got to tell you that is a huge huge lift, uh, because after mile twenty, your body has no carbohydrates left on average. Right, so basically, I try to describe it as a, a switch being flipped somewhere in your body, where your body's looking for energy, has no carbohydrates, so it tries to burn fat, and it's extremely inefficient, and that's where the wall is, and and you start getting tired at mile 21, 22. It's extremely hard to focus. It's hard to put one foot in front of the other, let alone jog and run. Yeah, um, yeah it's hard to even walk. So by mile 25, when you see friends and family yelling and screaming for you, it's just the agenda. Adrenaline boost that you need to get to the finish line, 
And, and I got to tell you, it's phenomenal to watch people on the course trying to pick each other up. And they're total strangers. It's phenomenal. It, it, that, it, that's what makes the experience so fantastic. Having friends and family yelling and screaming for you at, at strategic spots just when you're going to need them. And at the same time, having total strangers that are running alongside of you, maybe they notice you're struggling a bit. They, they they focus on you for a minute or two, saying, come on, you could do it. And it's just those little pieces of encouragement that get you past the wall from mile 20 to the finish line. Yeah, and Deanna, having experienced it herself, I saw in you at that point, like you, you know, were so encouraging to people because you've been there before. You know how important it is to sort of help push them along at that point. And, and because they are so very close to the end, they may not even realize it. They, you don't realize at that point where you are and how close you are, but you're just in, you're basically in so much pain, you just want it to be over. When you ran and I was running with you, you had that same look that you had during childbirth, birth, which was, you made me do this. I want to, if kill I was so tired, I would yeah. kill you right now. Exactly. With a few other nice choice words in there. When you shoved the, um, the camera right. in my face, running backwards. Yeah. So I can only imagine when you were doing that to people on uh, Sunday. But it, it is, it's, it's a mind over matter game right there. And, you know, I do have to say, like, being part of the team is a huge, huge um great push for a lot of people the morning of the full marathon one of our runners was so nervous and she was in tears and she was saying she couldn't do it she couldn't do it and steve drew let me tell you you always pull everybody through and you never let leave any man behind she was having problems at the end and she was getting sick and he said listen if i'm going to take you out of here now and if i have to carry you i'm going to carry you well she found it in herself to run over the finish line, they did get a um, little. Steve, you continue. Tell you know, tell the story. Of what ended up? Yeah, because I want to say, as much as we're standing there cheering on the sidelines, we're on the sidelines. But there are a lot of people, and Steve, you you are an incredible example of this. In that, you put others before yourself. You don't care about your time. You don't care when you finish. You see people struggling. You see people need that extra burst. And this is not the first year, man. I, I've heard people say. I wouldn't have got through it without Steve. I don't know. I just yell at him and tell him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was trying to have a touching moment. You hear you were, and then you just yell at him. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. But, uh, yeah, it was, you know, it's everyone just well, wants to finish. That's all. And, uh, well, you're, I think you're being I think you're being very humble because you do slow down. You do help them mentally, physically, whatever it is that you need to do to sort of get through. Look, my wife wouldn't have finished and that's taking nothing away from her. I told you last year she wouldn't have finished had it not been for you. Absolutely. Neither would have a couple of other runners who this year said Steve Drew got me to the finish line. You do. Well, you you put people first, and I have to. I am so grateful for that. For every race that I run with you, and there's a lot of races. I mean, I would do races in town here, but I just know that a lot of the races I'd walk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and something else um, that I quickly want to, want to mention that I believe is is the first year that they're doing it is for people that want the full marathon experience or maybe want to do things together and really be a part of it. Disney introduced a relay this year. It's a full marathon relay called the Chip and Dale where each partner gets to run a half marathon and they sort of share in a, in a special medal. It's a Chip and Dale medal. Uh, we know some WDW radio runners like James and Julie, a bunch of other people. Uh, I believe Aaron and Lori also did the, uh, the Chip and Dale this year. And that was a really nice experience for them because there was definitely that sense of teamwork getting through. They ran separately each one did a half and then sort of handed off sort of a, a virtual baton to the other. But they really liked it because it was something that they could share in together. Uh, you know, I, I had thought about asking you guys, well, is this something that you would do again? And I think what ends up happening, I think the answer is obvious because it becomes something not that, oh, gee, is it something I would do again? But it's something that you look for so Beckerman is this something that you sort of have already on your radar for well yeah you're gonna be running the princess and now sort of the, the half again next year absolutely um I as you just mentioned have the 5k for the princess coming up I've also decided to do the Tower of Terror 10 miler which will come up in October yep. and then I'll also be doing oh it's in September okay so and then I'll also be doing the wine and dine half 
and the half for a marathon weekend again next year. And I, I'm sure I know that Joe and Steve, you guys will continue to come back uh, year after. Steve, there's nothing more for you to do. You've done the you've done the goofy and you've done the dopey because you've done the five, the half and the full. I, I don't know what else you could do other than maybe setting up the day before. Well, you know, I've I ran sixteen Disney races now and every one has been a special experience. So, you know, it's not a kind of thing you just want to do one and say, okay, I can check it off because every time is something different, whether you're doing a personal best, uh, it becomes memorable or you run with friends. So, uh, each, each time is going to be something special. And I think even though you may have done 16 events and Joe, you've done a lot in, in since 2005, there is something special about having that medal put on you, whether it's a 5k, a half, a full, whatever it is. Um, I think that feeling of accomplishment and and uh, pers- you know sort of setting and overcoming a challenge for yourself. But I think that's really not the only reward for the weekend. Again, we've talked about the social aspects, the friendships that you have going in, or the friendships that you make as a result of it, the personal challenges, the personal sense of accomplishment. And I think for a lot of people, and I speak from a personal sense too, is that feeling of making a difference in not only your life, whether it's, hey, I want to check this off the bucket list, I want to get in shape, I want to lose weight, I want to whatever it is, but making the difference in the lives of others. And this has always been a very important part of everything that I've done since day one. The Dream Team Project was something that I had started as I was just getting into everything with Disney and writing my first book. And Valerie, you have been such an important part of helping to put together and organize and help out everybody with the running team and getting them shirts, setting up the Facebook page and keeping all the blog posts up. And all we ask from the Dream Team members is we want them to be a part of this event with us. We want them to participate in this with us and have that experience. But we also want them to try and help out others too. And we ask for... Uh, a small commitment. We ask them to help raise at least $100 over once they commit for the Make-A-Wish Foundation through our Dream Team project. Uh, This past weekend, I was amazed at the efforts that I saw from people, whether raising money personally or putting it out there on Twitter or Facebook or, or emailing their friends, and whether it was emails that people sent to me or people that I talked to or that we talked to at the corrals, the finish line, along the way, who thanked us about the Dream Team, we know what kind of difference it made. And, and I know that you have a sort of a... a, a and, and donations are still coming in because I saw some oh, still yeah. come in this morning. But approximately, to sort of round a route for us, what did we raise from the running team only? This isn't the whole Dream Team project. But what did we raise just from the running team so far? We started the running team a year ago last November. So it's just a little over a year that we have had the team formed as a, an official team and we have raised approximately $13,000. And that's not one big lump. Somebody's going to put down 13. That is mom and pop doing $30 for their kid or their boss doing a hundred dollars for their, their workers. I mean, it's amazing. The same names keep coming up in honor of it, backing this person, backing that person. Many of our runners have raised over a thousand dollars. I mean, it, it's it's an amazing feat, and as you said, still coming in because a lot of these ones that I was actually looking, uh, doing some accounting today, just came in today. I mean, it's just amazing, and I'm sure that um, you know, right now, especially the you know, it's the week after, and now we're gearing up for the princess, and we have a, a new person who was inspired to run the princess. We all know her, B. She's going to be running the princess this year, and she's already got donations in there too. It's just an amazing, amazing thing that the community itself can put this together and do this for the kids. Yeah, and it's great to see and hear people's personal stories of of what their fundraising efforts have been like, hearing from people who that they haven't heard from in years on Facebook or via email that heard about what they're doing. Uh, Chris Eliopoulos, who's a very, very talented artist, put out on Twitter, said, hey, I'm out raising money for the Dream Team Project. The people who who donate the most, I'm going to give them a, a, a one-of-a-kind 
piece of art that he created for him. And his response was phenomenal. And there was a lot of different creative ways. And I, I applaud and appreciate all that. And, you know, we finally have started to see the results of what everybody has done. And it's something that we just tried last year. Um, I had been contacted by Make-A-Wish who became aware of what we were doing up fundraising wise. And for the first time last year, we met one of the children that we had sponsored. And this year, because of what the Dream Team had done, what they've done again, we were able to meet two additional Make-A-Wish families this past Sunday. Uh, One family we met was a 15-year-old girl from California and her mom and her sister. And, you know, it was, you know, not to sort of put too cliche of a point, it's life-changing to meet these people and to hear their stories. Um, And and we'll talk more later on on the show and on the blog about uh, that girl and her family and how inspiring she is because of what she's been through. And later on in the day, uh, the running team had a meetup after the marathon at night in the United Kingdom, and we had a chance to be introduced to a seven-year-old boy named Nicholas, also from California, and his family. And just as a personal aside for me, this is exactly what I had set out to do back in uh, 2005 when my dad first got cancer and we were going to Sloan Kettering every day, and I saw these children who were very ill, and I knew right off the bat that if I was able to get my book published, I was going to take the proceeds from it and make raise funds for uh, wish granting because I knew trying to fundraise for research, those children would unfortunately never see the result of it. And Disney was such an important and is such an important part of my life. I wanted them to see the result of it now. So to be able to meet these children that we were able to sponsor to bring down here because of what the Dream Team did was a wish come true for me personally. It's a wish that that I set out, you know, nine years ago, whatever it's been, eight years ago at this point. And to be able to let the members of the running team meet them as well was so rewarding for everyone involved. And because, they, look, they, these kids and their families would never have gotten out here otherwise. Um, the mother said that, the, the, the kids themselves even said that. And... Both of the parents had had pulled me aside and said the same thing, which was their kids forgot about the treatment. They they laughed. They weren't tired anymore, despite what they were going through. And that's what I had envisioned, you know, back in my mind was that they would forget about doctors and hospitals and and therapy and and chemo and things like that. Um, Surgeries. Yeah, and, and hair loss, ports put in. I, I saw something. Um, As that night was going on and again, you know, everybody, if they wanted to, had the opportunity to meet and um, chat with Nicholas. And I saw something beyond those interactions that I think was the true ultimate testament to the power of the dream team, the WDW radio family, the Disney community. And look, I don't think I'm overstating when I say the good in people um, because Steve Moser uh, who is from Denver, did his first marathon. He and his wife, Beth, did her first 5K. They wanted to be part of the running team. And Steve went over and was talking with the boy, and he was sort of kneeling down and chatting with him. And um, in the most unselfish gesture I have ever seen, he took off the medal he was wearing that he was so proud of from his first half marathon and put it around this boy's neck. And that child was speechless, and I am certain will never forget that moment, as his parents could attest to. Um, and I, I talked to Steve later on, and I told him, and I want you guys to know that he should be more proud of that moment, because it was so much more, he should be more proud of that than finishing the race. Um, and, you know, um, speaking of, of selfless gestures, I would be remiss if I didn't say that my wife was so impressed with that that she sent him her medal the next day because we felt and she really felt that he needed to have that. He needed to have that medal hanging uh, on his wall or in his closet. And I, he emailed me and, and sort of talked about the dream team and, and what had happened that night and um, what it meant to him and, and what it meant um, for Deanna to do that for him. And I think... Guys, I mean, that's what this is all about. 
as far as I'm concerned, is when we see the good that comes from these kind of events um, right in our faces, right in, in person. And I know for a lot of people, that's a big motivating factor for them as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when I was running the 5K, even leading into the half marathon, knowing what I was doing for these kids really helped me um, push myself to finish. And um, getting to meet them was absolutely amazing. And just to see what your fundraising efforts do, it it changes your life. Well, I... I, I it, it's not my fundraising efforts. Um, it's It's... You know, I'm lucky to be able to sort of help pull people together, but it's what you guys do, whether you are running like Joe and Steve and you and Deanna and everybody else who runs for whatever reason they run or Valerie and helping to coordinate those things and all the people who from Make-A-Wish who have just been amazing. Um, it, it, it's all of those efforts and everybody who donates, whether it's a dime, a dollar or anything even above that, uh, to see those kids really is um it really brings it home for you and makes you understand um and appreciate sort of that that disney magic that we take for granted um but going forward you know we're going to keep on doing that we're going to keep on fundraising our efforts are going to continue to hopefully grow and already we are ready to continue to sponsor and just with with what we raised from the dream team for from the running team this year that'll sponsor two more wishes so know that there'll be two more families that we'll be able to have that same type of experience. Um, but I also talked to you guys over the weekend because now I think I'm hopefully getting smarter in my old age. And as I come up with stupid ideas, I like to run them by you first. <laughs> so that's why I can tell you that another 40 hour show will never, ever happen again. Oh, yes. Yay. <laughs> Yay. oh come on. You loved it. Uh, it um, it was fun in that house, I have to say. It, it was, was fun, fun in the all-star house. I don't really remember very much, but people told me I had fun. <laughs> we had fun. But I was thinking in the wee hours of Saturday morning as we were standing out in Epcot and, and watching people come in and saw everything from you know, nervous anticipation to excitement to fun and friendship and, and pictures and just everything else. I, I was thinking a lot about the weekend's events and I quickly realized that I think that the, a half marathon is too steep for most people to be able to sort of dip their toe in the water. So I think there's probably people who hear about this and say, oh, this sounds like a lot of fun, but I, I, I just can't. I can't get down there and do 13 miles. And, and I agree. I, I think it is. I think 13 miles is, is steep going from eating Funyuns on the couch, playing World of Warcraft or Disneyland Skylanders. Connect. Skylanders. Skylanders. <laughs> yes. um, but I, I want them to be able to participate in what they've heard about so much. And that's sort of when I got the idea of, let me start streaming this at sort of a very basic level, let them connect. But I want people to be able to come out and not have to worry about training, carb loading, all that, that's the fun part, mm -hmm. you know, getting the right shoes and ice baths and all that kind of stuff. So I decided on Saturday morning that I wanted to try and help effectuate that for people. And I want to do that by doing something like what I did four years ago, which is, is make a commitment going forward. You're making a commitment, by the way. I'm making a commitment. Um, and again, I'm not goofy, goofy nor am I... Do goofy? Wait, I'm not goofy. goofy. You're not goofy? I'm so nervous. I don't <laughs> <laughs> but what I, what I do want to do, and this is, again, this is not for me. This is for people who are listening, is I want to commit to running the Walt Disney World Marathon Weekend 5K. Next Are you going to run it? Wait, wait for <laughs> it. Wait for it. Next year and going forward. My wife is looking at me like, really? Did you think this out? Because what I want is I want the people who are listening. I want you to be part of that experience as well. Not by watching me run, not by me streaming it, but I want you guys to be able to come out and realize that you can get off the couch today and do a 5K tomorrow. So I want you to have the joy and the experience and the rush and the fun and the reward of taking part in the weekend's events. So together, together, we're going to do the 5K. And notice I didn't say run it because you're not going to have to. So what I want is if you're listening and saying, it sounds like fun, there's no way I could do a half. You know what, Lou? I probably couldn't even run a 5K. You're not going to have to because we'll do it as a group. And look, if we have to walk it, 
man, we'll walk it. Look, there's no sweeper bus. Uh, there's no... And it's not chipped. It's not chipped. You're not going to get swept. Look, we're also not going to come in first, so don't have any delusions <laughs> of grandeur. But we can all get together and experience it ourselves. And you can have that excitement and that rush of having somebody put a medal around your neck that, look, you can't describe whether it's a 5K, a half, a full, a goofy, a relay. There is something about that reward of getting that medal put on you that I want all these people who are listening, who are thinking about it, to understand and experience. And look, you can do it, and you don't need to train, and it's going to be about fun, it's going to be about family, Uh, so you could almost think about it as the WDW Radio family fun run, maybe without the running, Um, and look, you can also be part of something, you can be part of this running team with us, you can get a very cool WDW Radio running team Team tech shirt, shirt. you can help raise money for Make-A-Wish, you can experience what it's like with those children who get to come down and all we ask is that you try and commit to raise a hundred dollars total for the event and all that money goes directly to the make-a-wish foundation of america look and we're here to help you we're here to help you fundraise we're here to help answer your questions about the event there's discussions training whatever you need joe kalinsky valerie steve me Deanna, Happy Keller is answering people's emails individually like as they come in he's answering questions individually And the most important part is that we'll experience it all together. And I think we will have a blast getting out there and doing it and then stay for the weekend and come and cheer with us and see what it's like on that side. Or look, you feel inspired to to pull a Beckerman, (laughs) go out and train first. Yeah, don't do what I did. You could move up to a half marathon and you will find it, I guarantee you, I promise you, it will be one of the most rewarding experiences on a variety of levels as a Disney fan that you ever, ever had. I agree. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Sea of Blue at the 5K next year. Sea of WDW Radio Blue. We're going to have a blast. Yeah. Yep. Or if you want to do it in costume, I'm just saying, Valerie, mm-hmm. you know, you well, want to come and do it no, as costume. I'm going to wear WDW Radio <laughs> Blue, but I'm thinking we have a little bet going on here. Uh, I have, I let, let, me just, let me just, everybody slow down. Uh, I have some ideas. Um, that will help us in the fundraising realm. And you'll have to stay tuned for that. Um, speaking of which, stay tuned. That's not the only event I'm going to be announcing on this week's show or what we have planned for this year and beyond. And again, I'm getting that weird look from, um, from my wife. But um, I want to thank you guys for joining me, not just today, but as part of the team and the friendship you've extended and the differences you've made. You know, I, I was thinking... As I was preparing for the show, to ask the question that you cannot answer, which is, um, what would Walt think of something like this? What would Walt think? You know, he certainly, when he built Disneyland and, and had ideas for Disney, never thought that it would be used as a venue for an endurance event. And I, I think he would love it. Like I think, I think it embodies the spirit of Walt, as everybody who signed up and lined up for the race believed in their heart of hearts that if you could dream it, you can do it. And, you know, his quote about setting goals early and devoting all your, your energy to getting there and, and with enough effort, you could achieve anything. Um, and no matter what the outcome is at the end, you would know you were alive. And I think that's really what this event uh, encompasses. And to all of you guys, to everybody who participated, and, and I need to give a huge, huge bit of, of kudos and thanks and congratulations to everybody who volunteered There's a lot of people also on the running team and who are out there in the middle of the night when it's, relatively speaking, freezing cold out that are lining that course, whether they're putting down cones, cheering on runners, handing out water in the medical tent, handing out medals. All those people volunteer and get zero dollar wise in return other than the joy of helping people out. And I want to give you guys a lot of congratulations because for every event, 5K forward, you guys make a huge, huge difference, and I, and I don't want you to go unnoticed or underappreciated and, uh, and know that you are not. But Valerie and Steve and Joe and Beckerman and my wife, Deanna, um, thank you guys so much for continuing to inspire me every day by what you guys do for helping other people, whether they're on the running team, whether they're on the course, or the children that benefit from all you guys do. Uh, I, I am I am blessed and privileged to have you guys as friends and wives 
or, or wife individually. Um, so I want to thank you guys, and I look forward to uh, to seeing you again and in the 5K being on the course with you um, next year. Yay! Thank you. Yay. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you run. Thanks. Yeah. I'm happy you did. You didn't finish that by saying in Peter Pan tights or something like that. You just left it at run, which is which was nice. I appreciate it. They're coming. The tights are coming. We'll see. The tights are coming. The tights. Joe Klinsky, don't, are you going to do the nobody 5K? Say, don't, nobody say Are you kidding? I'm children. totally dressing up as Tinkerbell. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so excited. You got it, babe. Awesome. Do it for the children. I got to find a tutu. Uh, like I'm sure you can down there. But you still have to have WDW Radio Blue on. That's right. And listen, oh, if that- you guys are interested in joining the running team, I almost forgot, you can visit the website Go to wdwradio.com slash running. You'll find the, all the information there. Uh, if you have any questions, you can shoot me an email or Valerie an email. She is Valerie at wdwradio.com. And now back to the discussion of Joe in a tutu. <laughs> <laughs> Next subject. There we go. <laughs> Make your children proud, Joe. There you go. <laughs> I mentioned during the previous segment that I had another announcement about an upcoming WDW Radio event and how you could participate. And February 11th marks the five-year anniversary to the exact date of WDW Radio. I launched this new show after having already been podcasting for more than two years, going back to early 2005 and listening back to how bad I sounded, I think, on show number one. I'm surprised I lasted five minutes, let alone five years. But I did, and we did, thanks to all of you. And it's because of your friendship and support that I've been blessed over these years to be able to share something I am so passionate about with you. I never imagined back in 2003, when I was writing my first Walt Disney World trivia book, that this is where I would be, literally and figuratively, just a few years later. But you listened, and our WDW Radio family has grown over the past number of years, We've shared some important milestones along the way, as well as some additions and losses, both in Disney as well as for me personally. But along that journey, we've experienced them all together, thanks to you allowing me to do so each week on the show, blog, videos, live broadcasts, and the birth of the box people, uh, the discussion forums, in-person meets, and special events. And all those things grew out of something that started out as an idea to use the audio medium to let you feel as though you were part of the conversation, a way for me to talk about things in Disney that just made us all happy, the reasons why we go and what we love about Walt Disney World. And I've always set out to make you an interactive and vested part of the show, and many of those other outlets and mediums have allowed that to happen. And this growing community of friends is one that I believe shares not just a love of Disney, but one that shares common ideals, a belief in things like magic and dreams, and yeah, maybe even a little bit of pixie dust, who who feel that optimism and a positive outlook on life reign over things like pessimism and doubt. And that has extended to what I've set out to do even as far back as my first book, which is sharing that, that magic, healing power of Disney with families and their children who face life-threatening illnesses through our collective work on the Dream Team Project which has raised almost $200,000 for the Make-A-Wish Foundation of America. And as I said from the very beginning, you have always been part of my extended family. We really are friends, whether we have met yet or not. And I am once again incredibly grateful for all that you've given me because of the show. So with our five-year anniversary just around the corner, we feel it's important to mark the fifth anniversary of, of not the show, but you all, the community and the family of WDW Radio. So we want to celebrate the fifth anniversary with what we hope will become an annual event, which is going to be the WDW Radio online anniversary party. And it's a party that we want you to attend, and you don't have to be in Walt Disney World to do so. 
So on February 11th, there's going to be a box people party like something we've never done before. Starting at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, you can tune in to WDW Radio Live to join me and some other members of the WDW Radio family as we live out five amazing hours in the Magic Kingdom. And what are we going to do when we're there? How are we going to celebrate the anniversary of the WW Radio family? Well, that's up to you, the people in the box. What we're asking you to do is submit ideas for the anniversary celebration. Should we do things like ride Splash Mountain, share five Dole Whips, go hug Mickey Mouse? Whatever you want us to do, we're going to take your ideas, we're going to put them to a vote, and then you guys can watch live in the box as we race through the Magic Kingdom trying to fulfill your goals for us starting with the feet that had the most votes and then moving right down the list. And we're going to see how many of those feats we can accomplish in five hours. Now, there will be, of course, a catch. And at some point during the five hours, we're going to face a roadblock. And the most intriguing idea submitted by the box, as deemed by a panel of independent judges, is going to be presented to those of us who are in the parks. We're not going to know about them in advance. And we have to accomplish this roadblock before we move on. So you could submit your ideas for this sort of unique celebration day to anniversary at wdwradio.com no later than January 5th, 2012. Again, if you want, the email address will be in this week's show notes. But wait, there's actually more. Because we all believe in the power of Disney and bringing magic to others' lives, we can't let this occasion go by without, again, trying to help make a difference for others. So what we're going to do is we're starting to now take orders for a very limited edition WDW Radio 5th Anniversary Collector's Pin. And all proceeds from the sale of this pin are going to benefit the Dream Team Project, which has already given close to $200,000 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation of America. You can visit the WDW Radio shop to order the limited edition pin starting right now. It's just $10, and again, all the proceeds from that will go to the Dream Team Project to benefit Make-A-Wish. But wait, there's actually still more because we want to give the box people a chance to win some very cool WDW Radio prizes as well. So in an effort to build sort of the ultimate anniversary picture slideshow, we're asking you to send in your favorite WDW Radio photos. So for example, were you with us on the first WDW Radio cruise on the Disney Dream this past year? Maybe you stopped by our booth at D23 or one of the other special events that we've been to. Maybe you saw us broadcasting with the box at Walt Disney World or maybe came by one of the meets of the month or saw us maybe during hour 30 of the 40-hour show. Whatever it was, send us some of your photos because we're going to be building a slideshow that we're going to post on the WDW Radio blog and show it live during the anniversary party and we're looking for your photos. We're also going to select 10 submissions randomly to receive a WDW Radio family 5th anniversary gift and please email your photos to photos at wdwradio.com and whether you're a new listener or you've been listening back to show number one I'd also love to hear from you your opinions your thoughts on maybe your top three well or maybe since it's five years your top five episodes of WDW Radio, ones that you continually go back to, ones you point your friends to, your favorite interview, your favorite segment, your favorite guest, whatever it might be, post in the comments on this week's show notes, or you can email me with your thoughts of sort of about your top five podcasts from the past five years at lou at wdwradio.com. But wait, finally, there's even, of course, one more thing, because a WDW Radio event wouldn't be complete without a really cool prize. And thanks to our friends Becky Mankin and her team over at MEI and Mouse Fan Travel, we will have an amazing gift to the winner of the ultimate WDW Radio Family Member Trivia Contest. It's going to be a six-night vacation at Walt Disney World. We're going to post the questions on the blog by January 25th, and you'll have until Saturday, February 4th to enter. And the winner of the prize is going to be announced during the anniversary show on February 11th. Really, really excited for what we have planned for February 11th to sort of mark the fifth year anniversary this year. And then, of course, going forward, for more information, you can check out links in this week's show notes or check the WDW Radio blog. We'll be posting all those links and email addresses for you once again. I think this is going to be interesting and fun. 
And again, I'm going to be bringing it to you live on February 11th so you can be a part of the anniversary celebration that you made happen. You can watch it at www.radiolive.com. And if you're going to be in Walt Disney World during this time, stay tuned for more information about February's Meet of the Month in Walt Disney World and maybe even a little sort of WDW Radio birthday party to take place that weekend as well. You can stay tuned to Twitter.com. I am at Lou Mangiello, Facebook.com slash WDW Radio, or DisneyMeets.com for more information and details later on this week. Most of all, I want to thank you again for five years of listening, support, friendship, family, happiness, and yeah, maybe in a little bit of Disney magic. You have all made my life better, and you inspire me to get up every day and be a better person, and that makes me excited for what the future is going to hold. There are bigger and better things on the horizon, I promise you, including something else that's going to happen February 11th, which I haven't announced as yet. So I want to thank you guys once again. I hope to see you and you see us in the box. And once again, thank you so much for the past five years, and here's to the future and you. That's going to do it for this week's show. Thanks again for taking the time and tuning in this and every week. Don't forget to come by. Please comment on this week's show over at the show notes. You can visit wdwradio.com. Click on show number 257. Leave your comments there about your experience or your thoughts about Disney's Marathon Weekend. Don't forget that while you're there, there's a lot more going on multiple times a day on the WW Radio blog where you can be involved in the conversations, polls, contests, and more. We have a new section now for kids and teens. We have special blog posts by you and for you every Tuesday, as well as a wide variety of scheduled things, including Disney history, trivia, reviews, and lots more. Again, I want you guys to be part of the conversation so you can call the voicemail, be heard on the air by calling 407-900-9391. That's 407-900-WDW1. Or you can email me with any questions at lou at wdwradio.com. In addition to the podcast, don't forget about our weekly live video broadcast and chat every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern at wdwradiolive.com. There you can be part of the discussion and conversation. But if you can't catch it live, that's okay. It'll be at youtube.com slash WDW Radio on the blog, or I'll also post the audio as well in the iTunes feed. I talked before about the community and the family, and you can meet other Disney fans either virtually on our discussion forums or in person at the Meets of the Month and at other events like our upcoming WDW Radio Cruise on the Disney Dream in November 2012. Visit WDWRadioCruise.com for more information. I'm going to have some more details about that cruise coming soon. But again, you can get a free no-obligation quote by visiting the site there. The next meet of the month in Walt Disney World will be the weekend of February 11th. Again, working out some final details for that. Stay tuned to the show, the site, Twitter, and DisneyMeet.com. Quick thanks to my partners and sponsors, including MouseFanTravel.com. They're my official and recommended travel provider. Whether you're going to Disney World, Disneyland, Adventures by Disney, Disney Cruise Line, whatever it might be, it's because that's who I've been using for the past five years and beyond. Becky and her team give you the best possible prices and the discounts. More importantly, I use them because of the amazing level of personal service that they give you, which is really their hallmark all at no additional cost to you. They're over at MouseFanTravel.com. And one of my favorite places to stay right in the heart of Walt Disney World is over at the Swan and Dolphin. You've heard me talk about the restaurants like Blue Zoo and Il Molino and Shula's and the incredible Heavenly Beds, the Mandara Spa, lots more. You can visit them over at swananddolphin.com. And if you're looking something for maybe like a condo, maybe a, a seven-bedroom home with multiple master bedrooms, bringing the extended family down, visit our friends over at allstarvacationhomes.com. As always, my friends, and you are my friends now more than ever, if you like the show, all I ask is that you please help spread the word. Let others know about it. Tweet out that you're listening. Share the links on Facebook or Google Plus or your favorite discussion forums. And please come by, rate and review the show over in iTunes. Very much appreciated there. And please don't forget to love your family, hug your friends, work hard, 
and pursue what you are passionate about each and every day. Believe in it and always keep moving forward. Thank you again so very much for everything, including listening this week and for the past five years. I I appreciate it more than you'll ever know. I hope you guys have a great, great week this week. So until next time, see ya. Hi, Lou. This is Happy. Just wanted to congratulate everyone on the WDW Radio Run team who ran last weekend in the uh, marathon, half marathon, goofy challenge, the 5K, any and all events. Just congratulations to all of you. And if you choose to do another Run Disney event and are still a Dream Teamer, then please feel free to send me an email with any running question. I can be reached at wdwradiorun at gmail.com. Thanks, Lou. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, Lou. It's Jamie from Chicago. Happy New Year. I just wanted to call in and wish you and your family and the WDW Radio family a very happy New Year 2012. Um, Hopefully everyone's wishes and dreams come true this year. I know a lot of us are setting goals and um, promises that we want to keep for the New Year. So um, good luck to everyone um, and just keep, uh, for lack of better terms, keep moving forward and... uh, Best of luck to everyone in the new year. I look forward to all the excitement that's going on with Disney this year, including the new um, Leap Year celebration. I think that's awesome. Um, I know I'll be entering every day for a chance to win a vacation. Um, And good luck to everyone else. And again, just um, enjoy the new year. God bless everyone. And catch you at Disney soon. Bye. Hi, Lou. Jen Tremley from Bristol, Connecticut, calling. Just wanted to wish everyone a uh, very uh, happy new year and uh, wish a happy new year to all my fellow WDW radio uh, listeners out there. I just got finished uh, listening to this week's show, uh, show 255, which was your look back um, at the Disney uh, 2011 uh, year, and um, I thoroughly enjoyed it as always. And I just wanted to kind of uh, comment and reflect on some of my favorite um, things from this past year, um, as well as um, stuff that I'm looking forward to for 2012. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, the new Fantasy ship coming on online in 2012. I have my cruise booked for September 8th. I'm so, so, so excited about doing that. I've never done a Disney cruise before. Um, I'm also excited about the new Fantasyland expansion, just like everyone else is. Um, I'm uh, looking forward to the new uh, Art of Animation Resort opening this year, um, so we have another choice uh, in the value category to stay at. Um, I'm just looking forward to the uh, new game at the Magic Kingdom, um, as well as just another great year uh, with regards to Disney. Um, I also... Um, as far as reflecting back in 2011, um, you know, the announcement of the new Fantasyland expansion, I know it wasn't really announced last year per se, but, um, you know, the, uh, just the, 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 all the updates and everything that's kind of changed over this past year with it, um, has definitely been exciting. Um, obviously the new Star Tours opening, um, and, you know, some of the, uh, closings down at Downtown Disney, uh, just, you know, pretty much everything that you guys commented on, um, and then some I can definitely relate to in some aspect or another. Um, But I just wanted to say thank you for everything um, that you do, um, not only in 2011, but in years to come. Um, I know you're just going to keep continuing to hit it out of the park in some form or another. Um, I also thoroughly enjoyed being a new subscriber to Celebrations Magazine this past year in 2011, um, and I thoroughly enjoy getting that monthly. Um, It's a great magazine, and it definitely um, keeps that bit of Disney uh, spirit alive and well, um, even when you can't get to the parks. So once again, Lou, even though we've never met, I thoroughly appreciate what you do, and uh, I I wish you a very happy and healthy and successful new year, and hopefully I'll be get a chance to meet you um, in 2012 or in one of the years to come. So thanks again, and uh, have a great week. Bye-bye. Hi, Lou. This is Tony from Illinois. I just got done listening to show number 456 with uh, you and Jim Corcus going around Hollywood Studios on the Trail of the Rocketeer. And I like that show. I had actually never seen the Rocketeer before, 
but after listening to you and uh, Jim talk about everything in the studios that reference it, I actually went onto uh, eBay and bought a copy of the movie. So just thank you for introducing me to that classic piece of Disney that I had never seen before. And I love every episode of the show that has Mr. Cortez on there because I'm going to learn something that I never even imagined I didn't know. You 